Hey guys, it's Makesha. Today I'm going to share some advice for those of you who are looking to get into plush making. These will be suggestions for people who are wanting to make plushies for the first time. It can be a daunting idea with the amount of supplies needed and all the techniques that you need to learn, but if you break it up it's going to be easier to do. And I hope this advice will be useful to you to make it less overwhelming overall. So I'm going to cut some footage of sewing various plushies into this video since it's mostly going to be just me talking. The first thing that I recommend that you do is to choose the pattern for the plush that you'd like to make. This is going to dictate the type of fabric that you want and the amount you'll need as well as the various other supplies. A lot of people who have never made plush before also want to start out by making their own patterns. I understand that you may have big ideas of things you'd like to make and that's great and you should have goals for your art. On my post asking for questions to answer for beginners, I also got a ton of questions about how to pattern plushies but I don't recommend that absolute beginners start by also drafting their own patterns. I know this is going to be disappointing for a lot of you who are looking for me to share more advice on how to develop your own patterns, but this is like trying to learn how to run before you learn how to walk. If you don't understand the basics of plush making to begin with, it would be extremely difficult to figure out how to draft a pattern with little to no knowledge. Because of that, I recommend that you start by making some plushies from pre-made patterns. If you don't want to spend money, there are a ton of free patterns out there if you search for them. You could look for them on DeviantArt, you could look for them on Pinterest for just a couple places to name, uh, but a few things to keep in mind about this. Not every free pattern is going to come with instructions. As a beginner, it's very important for it to have instructions, so try to avoid these if you can. Some patterns I've seen online will have videos that will walk you through how to make them, so this is a good idea to look out for these types as a beginner. In addition, make sure that you're choosing a pattern that is marked for beginners. There are a lot of techniques and patterns that are very difficult to sew, and it's going to make your life a lot harder if you start with one of these. You need to start small to get the basics down and you can make the big ideas that you have a long-term goal for yourself. There are a couple artists with free patterns that I can recommend. One of them is Teacup Lion, who has a bunch of free patterns on their website. And the other artist I can recommend is Choli Knight. They also have a ton of free patterns on their website. They also have this difficulty rating on their patterns, which is going to be super useful when trying to figure out which are the more beginner patterns to start with. And of course there are patterns that you can buy as well. A common place to look is Etsy where you can just search for a plush sewing pattern. Most of these are going to be instant download PDFs so you get them instantly and you can just print them off. You can also search at Joann's for physical patterns. I've seen a bunch there and they've even had some by popular artists like Teacup Lion who I mentioned earlier. So while you're choosing your pattern, it's important that you choose something that you would like to make while you are starting out as a beginner. Some people may want to get into the hobby as a form of income, which is perfectly fine, but learning how to make plushies can be frustrating, and if you're solely driven by the thought of making money, it may be harder for you to want to continue. So if you can find something in the middle ground of what you would like to make versus what you think would actually sell, then that's a great thing too but pay attention to the rights of the pattern that you're using to make your plush. Not every artist is going to let you sell plushies made from their pattern, and pretty much every single artist is going to want to be credited when you post it or when you sell it, regardless of how much you've altered that pattern or not. So just make sure that you please support the artists that you use their pattern from and tag them in your work. So when you do select the plush that you're going to want to make, you're going to follow the pattern to see what supplies you're going to need. So now that you've chosen your pattern, you should have a list of supplies that you're going to need for the plush that you're about to make, and obviously the big one is the type of fabric that you're going to use. As a beginner, I would say that the three most common types of fabric that you may use are minky, fleece, or felt. So Minky is one of the most commonly used fabrics for plushies nowadays. It is extremely soft because of this pile or this fur-like texture that it has. It comes in a large variety of colors and it is kind of expensive, uh, partly because it isn't a very commonly produced fabric and it 
you also have to buy it online for the most part. So Joann's does have minky fabric, but it's not super high quality, not nearly as high quality as the Shannon brand of minky, which is the most commonly used brand of minky out there. So you could use the Joann's if you're looking to just get started and try something out with minky, but it will be a little bit different than the Shannon brand minky that most people use. You can buy minky in a variety of places online. If you have Amazon Prime, you can look for Shannon minky on there because you'll get free shipping, but it's just supplied by fabric.com. So if you don't have Prime, you could just look there instead. You can also look on places like Missouri Quilt Co. or Cali Quilt Co. And some places will sell shorter cuts of minky than a yard if you're looking to buy less fabric. And there's always various sellers on Etsy that you could look for if you're looking for random colors because not everyone will have every color of Shannon Minky. So it is kind of difficult to work with because it has a stretch. So if you're not used to working with stretchy fabrics, this can be a bit difficult. And it also is kind of slippery because of this pile or fur texture that it has. But if you really want to get into blush making, getting used to working with Minky is something that you'll have to do. And I recommend checking out my video on working with Minky for more tips than I will provide in this video. So the second type of fabric that I'll talk about is fleece. And this is another very commonly used fabric in blush making. Fleece comes in a couple different varieties. You have anti-pill fleece, which this is here, which means it's got this anti-pill texture and a pill texture is something when fleece wears and tears over time so it's going to get this these little balls of fabric on the surface and the anti-pill fleece has already created that texture so that it's not going to develop that texture unevenly on its own now you'll also hear about blizzard fleece which doesn't have that texture but it's generally considered less quality than the anti-pill fleece, so try to use the anti-pill fleece if you can. Uh, but you'll, you might run into issues where you can only find certain colors in anti-pill or blizzard. So that can be a bit of an annoyance with using fleece. But you will be able to find fleece in a decent number of colors. Another benefit is that it's commonly found in stores, so you don't necessarily have to order it online and it is generally less expensive than minky. And finally, you have felt. So felt is probably my least recommended material to use because it is frequently very cheap. It doesn't stretch, so it's going to affect how the plush comes out unless your pattern is specifically designed to be made with felt. So making a plush that is intended for a stretchy fabric with a non-stretchy fabric will make it a lot harder and also change the way that the plush comes out in the end. So I would say that you can use felt if you really just want something cheap and easy. It is going to be a little easier to work with since it doesn't stretch, but just keep this in mind. Use it with caution that your results are probably going to vary from the intent of the pattern. So besides the fabric you're going to use, you're going to need a variety of other materials. One would be a small bag of polyfill, which is the stuffing that you're going to use in the plush. You can just buy a small to medium bag of polyfill if you're just getting started with the hobby and want to see if you like it, as opposed to some of the crazy 10 pound or 20 pound boxes of polyfill out there. In addition, you should get some thread at a minimum. You would want to just get some white thread and some black thread. Some people will use matching color to the fabric they're going to use, which is what I typically do. But again, if you want to keep the amount of money that you're spending low in this hobby at the beginning, you can just get a light thread and a dark thread. And this is just going to be an all-purpose polyester thread for your machine or if you're doing hand sewing. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. These are going to be a dedicated pair of fabric scissors, so you don't want to use any old craft scissors that you have laying around. It's going to be very difficult to cut the fabric with because you want to keep them nice and sharp. So whatever scissors you purchase, you want to make sure that you only use them to cut fabric. So ideally you would want to get one large pair of scissors for cutting out 
your pattern pieces, and then a smaller pair of scissors for trimming your thread and things like that. But if you can only afford one, I'd recommend going with the larger one because it's gonna make cutting out your pattern pieces a lot easier. You're also going to need some pins to pin your fabric together and these come in a variety of sizes and different ballpoint at the end as well. Uh, there are a bunch of different types at a fabric store like Joann's if you go there. You will need a marker for marking your fabric and I highly recommend purchasing either an air soluble pen which will disappear over time or a water soluble fabric pen, uh, which obviously by the name implies that you use water to get rid of it. You can use just normal pens like either a ballpoint pen or a sharpie, but these can frequently show through the fabric if you're using a lighter color fabric. So probably want to do a test if you're going to use a non-fabric marker on your fabric first before you commit. And then you're going to need some all-purpose sewing needles for doing some hand sewing even if you do have a machine you're going to need some needles to do some finishing touches on your plush you will also want to have a seam ripper as well this is going to be very important even me i've been making plushies for 10 years and i use my seam ripper on every single project i do there's always going to be some kind of mistake that you'll need to undo so this is an invaluable tool in plush making. But these are just some of the tools that I use in plush making. You can check out another one of my videos, which are all the tools of my trade in plush making, but these are things that I've accumulated over 10 years of sewing plushies. So as a beginner, you won't need all of these tools, but I do talk more in depth about some of them. And so you might find that video beneficial to watch as well. And so obviously I've left out a really big tool if you decide to use one, which is a sewing machine. So you have your supplies, you have your pattern, and now you need to sew it all together. What do you choose? Hand sewing your plush or using a sewing machine? Let's start by talking about hand sewing. You can consider this if you don't have a sewing machine and you don't want to buy one. It is a valid way to make plushies, but I'm going to caution you on some things. One is that any plush made with hand sewing will likely be much less sturdy than any machine sewn plush. Humans just can't sew as efficiently as a machine. So you need to keep this in mind if you decide to sell your plush or even possibly give it to a child. And it's going to take much longer to hand sew a plush together than to machine sew it. It's going to be very tedious. You need to make the stitches small for it to hold together well and for the seams to look clean. The shorter the stitches, the better it is, which also means it's going to take a lot longer. Because of how long it takes, this might end up being frustrating and it might deter you from the hobby. So you need to consider whether or not you're going to get a sewing machine. If you do choose to use a sewing machine and you don't have one, you have some options. You could borrow one from a relative if they have one and you'd like to just try it out. Or if you do decide you want to buy one, you could buy a beginner machine. Now, I would say not to go extremely cheap. Now, they frequently have these tiny little sewing machines that look like toys. Very, very cheap, but these are just awful little machines and... Often everything you sew is just either going to break the thread or it won't sew it together. The stitches will be a mess and it's just not going to work. So I would highly recommend staying away from those dinky little toy-like sewing machines that you might see. At a minimum, you just need your sewing machine to do a straight stitch. And some people will look automatically for sewing machines that can also do embroidery, but as a beginner, this is definitely not a requirement. So another thing to pay attention when you're trying to choose your machine is to look at the brand name. You should try to stick with well-known brands like Singer or Brother, ones that are going to be generally more reliable. And I always recommend checking the reviews for the machine that you're looking to buy. You want to make sure that other people who have used it like it a lot and that it's going to be a good machine for you. I get asked frequently what type of machine I use and my machine is a Brother SE1900 which does both 
normal sewing and embroidery and I wouldn't recommend it as a beginner because it is a fairly expensive machine and I used to recommend the Brother SE400 as a good beginner machine even though it does do both normal sewing and embroidery it is decently affordable for a machine that does both of them but unfortunately the SE400 is no longer in production so they're becoming harder to find so I no longer can recommend the SE400 unless you can find it pretty cheap. So if you do decide to use a sewing machine it is important to make sure that you are using the right needle for the fabric that you're using. Stretch fabrics like Minky are going to need to use a needle that is made for sewing stretch fabrics. And I've also found that using a jersey knit needle works best for sewing fleece on my machines. So now it's time to get sewing. If you're using a sewing machine and it is your first time using a machine, you probably want to go ahead and get acquainted with your machine first before you start sewing your plush together. You should first figure out how to correctly thread your machine. This is super important because threading your machine wrong is one of the most common reasons that your stitches won't come out as you intend them to. So take some time to properly figure out how to thread your machine. This also includes making sure that your bobbin is placed in the correct position and that it spins the correct way. You should also get used to using the foot pedal. This can be a little bit disorienting for people that have never sewn before and aren't used to using a foot pedal, but getting used to the pressure which you have to apply to get it to sew at the right speed that you want can be difficult to get used to. And you should practice back stitching at the beginning and the end of your stitches, as well as practicing straight lines and curved lines. So you can use this on test pieces of fabric. Um, if you're cutting out your pattern and you have little pieces left over, you can use these pieces to test out things with your sewing machine. So when you start sewing your plush, you're just going to obviously follow the instructions on the pattern. And if you run into issues, you need to start by asking yourself, what am I having issues with? If you do run into issues using your machine, my advice would be to start with the manual as a resource. And if you don't have it, you can frequently look it up on the manufacturer's website online. This is going to have a handy troubleshooting guide in the back where you can look up the issue you're having with your machine and it will give you some common solutions on how to fix it. A lot of people are going to struggle with the tension on the machine. So the tension of the machine is going to impact the way your stitches come out. This can be a problem by threading your machine incorrectly, putting your bobbin in incorrectly, by using the incorrect type of needle on your fabric, but it could also be a variety of other reasons that you might be able to find out in your manual. If you're having difficulty sewing parts of the plush itself, you can start by rereading your instructions. You can see if the artist has any tips or offers advice on how to sew it together. You can look for tutorials on YouTube or you can just Google the issue that you are having with sewing your plush together. There's also other resources like a Facebook group called Plush Artists United and it is full of handy resources as far as how to sew certain things together, advice on patterns and different things with plush making as well as a place to show off your hard work. Once you get your plush sewn together, what's next? You should take some time to admire what you've accomplished. It's really awesome that you can just take a pile of fabric and turn it into a 3D object, so you should be proud of yourself. Next, you can ask yourself, what can I do better? If it didn't come out as clean as you'd like, you can try making another plush with that pattern and learn from your mistakes. If you constantly try to improve on every plush you make, you will quickly become a better plush maker. And if you'd like to move on to a different type of pattern, you can select another one to make another plush with. You should try to pick a pattern that features different techniques to expand your skills. And you could also pick a more difficult pattern if you feel like you're ready to take it on. Eventually you can start altering the patterns that you work with. You could add a color transition where they don't exist in the pattern. 
and you can check out my video on color blocking for an example of how to do this. You could also edit parts of the pattern, like maybe changing the tail shape if it has one, or doing something like adding wings, and eventually you'll become familiar with all the common techniques and patterns used in plush making to eventually start feeling comfortable with drafting your own patterns. Now that is out of the scope of this video since this is purely for absolute beginners, but I do look forward to sharing more patterning advice with you guys in the future. I wish all of you looking to make plushies the best of luck with your endeavors and to have fun. See you next time.